You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of When Stars Fall. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know we've got our Patreon up. We've got bronze tier for $5, silver tier for $10, and gold tier for $15 each. And uh, they all come with exclusive rewards, and all of them come with permanent access to our community Discord server. So y'all want to jump in and support the channel, it's as little as $5, and it really, really helps us right now. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Worry not, there will be plenty of time for us to hang out at the Academy, should you choose to as well. So... On another note, did you have any more dreams or memories come to you after our chat last night? I hadn't even thought about it much, but I slept pretty soundly. No, unfortunately. Once I had fallen asleep, I don't think I dreamed at all. I'm sure your memories will return in time if you continue to let them. Anyway, we should clean up and get a move on. Silas stood and brought our dishes over to the sink. I joined him and helped him clean and dry the dishes. After helping with the dishes, I went upstairs to quickly brush my teeth and hair before meeting Silas outside on the other side. It seemed like the worst of the storm had already passed, but the sky was still dark and overcast and there was a small sh a small shower falling. The air smelled of fresh rainfall and the ground squished beneath my boots as I walked toward, Mr toward Silas and Mr. Jurda, who seemed to be waiting on me. And with Marcus accounted for, I believe that's everything. Is everyone ready to head out? Yes, sir. Yeah. Silas walked over and placed his hand on the side of the tent. Away. The tent collapsed and folded in on itself again. Folded it on itself again, and again, growing smaller until it sat folded in a cube shape with small metal plates beneath it. The plates rose and covered the tent cube, and, and sitting where the tent used to be was now the metallic cube from before. Silas gathered up the cube and walked over to the back of that carriage to place it back in the trunk. Mr. Jurda hopped onto the front of the carriage, and I noticed the horse had already been bridled and prepared for our journey. Silas opened the carriage door and waited. Well, are you coming? Well, that was all very efficient. Uh, yeah. I hurried over to the door, and Silas ushered me in and waited for me to be seated before he followed suit and closed the door. A short whistle from Silas was the only signal Mr. Journey need needed, and the carriage lurched forward and began moving out of the woods and toward the road. Our travel was indeed slower than it had been the day before. While the rain wasn't too bad currently, the road was still slick and muddy, which forced the, which forced the pace of the horse and carriage to slow. Despite the long ride, Silas and I didn't discuss too much. A few hours into the ride, we broke into the drinks and snacks, and I had asked Mr. Jurda to stop the carriage just long enough to bring him some of the refreshments. A few more hours passed, and Silas had leaned against the wall and fallen asleep. I'd half expected him to curl up like a fox would, but I guess beastmen were more than man were more than animal. I still didn't know much about the world around me. The things I had learned from Silas were helpful, and I tried to commit as much to memory as I could. When Silas had woken up from his nap an hour later, I asked if he would teach me more magic while he waited. Sorry, but we probably shouldn't push you too much until you have some more formal training and practice. Keep practicing your meditation and visualization. I'm sure if you decide to join the Mage Course, you'll have plenty of opportunities to learn magic. Even some of the other courses dabble in the mystical arts in different ways. That's disappointing. I really wanted Silas to teach me, but he does have a point. Formal training at the Academy would be best. Well, assuming I can even enroll. Do I even want to? The main goal had been to gather information and try to recover my memories, but the more Silas talked about the Academy, the more interested I'd become in it. Silas, you keep talking like I'm going to be attending the classes with you, but you also said it's a prestigious place and difficult to get into. What makes you think I'll be accepted? Well, I suppose I'm hoping you'll attend and be accepted. Your body remembers things you don't, which has become quite clear since I met you. I've also seen what you're capable of with the small amount of magic I taught you. I hope that perhaps if you were to attempt the, apl the applied enrollment test, you... You may, your, you may surprise yourself and, and them and be accepted. Honestly, I don't even... I don't know if you even want to attend, but I hope you do. I've grown quite fond of being able to hang out with you. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out what secrets my body might be keeping. Silas smiled at that. I look forward to seeing just what you can do. Silas glanced out the window, then back to me. I recognize the scenery. It should be much longer till we reach our destination. Slightly ahead of our delayed schedule, but we shouldn't be arriving within the next hour or two just before sh but we should be arriving within the next hour or two just before supper time. The sky was still overcast and dark, making it seem like it was already well into the evening. It made me wonder if we'd even be able to make out the academy building once we reached it unless there were some sort of light sources. Over the course of the next couple hours, Silas had gone on about the different factions in the country and what he hoped to do by learning at the academy. Like y'all? I had learned that aside from humans and beastmen, there were many other types of people living all over the world. 
The elves, the dwarves, the half-dragons, the merfolk, fey, and so many more. Each group having their own alliances and dealing with each other and dealings with each other, many seemingly living in a strained peace, according to Silas. It seemed like there was way too much going on in the world to, to have just forgotten about. It made my head spin just trying to make take it all in and think about it. Then I felt the carriage bounce and I could hear the clatter of hooves on stone. Silas pulled the window curtain aside and gestured toward the now open view. Welcome to the Academy. Nice. My jaw dropped at the view. I had, I had expected one, maybe two large buildings, but it was so much larger than I could imagine. It's like a city! Silas laughed. Indeed, the Academy is officially its own city in the Kingdom of Ruthos. Is that a castle? Yes, that is the main structure for the Academy dorms in many of the classes. The rest of the city is where many citizens live and hold market. There's also a variety of nice shops and activities to do during the sun during semester breaks. Outside of the kingdom itself, this is likely the largest city you'll see this side of the continent. The carriage continued beyond the main gates of the city, and we continued along the paved road and headed straight for the castle. It was about another half hour from the main gate to the entrance of the castle itself by the carriage. By carriage, I marveled at just how large the city really was. Though soon enough, we were pulling into a large stable, large stable building and getting out of the carriage. Silas advised Mr. Jurda that he would see to it that the horse and carriage were taken care of and the luggage taken to the proper area. Then Silas took me and we headed back and we headed into the main entrance of the castle. The inside was massive. Not only the entrance, but as we walked in, the number of arches and doors leading to other areas just as large added to the sheer scale of this castle. This place is huge! My words echoed off the walls and several people turned, turned in to look at our direction. Oops, inside voice, Marcus. Silas laughed. Indeed. It's quite a marvel. Every time I come here, it seems as though there's always more to see. I'd recommend sticking close by someone who knows who knows their way around. While you're here, you're likely to get lost. I have no doubt about that. Good thing I've got an excellent guide. Well, now I have to live up to that illustrious title. Shall I give you a quick tour of the main hall before we go to the administration office? Ah, uh, yoy. Uh, please do. Very well. The Academy was founded two centuries ago during the Dragon War. It was founded in an effort to train new fighters for the Kingdom's armies. However, before the first recruits ever completed their training, the war ended. Rather than disband the Academy, the king of that era, King Eldridge Gimmel IX II, decreed that the Academy would be used to train volunteers to aid the citizens in the Kingdom with protection and other tasks as needed. Those volunteers, once graduated, would be given the title Adventurer, and would be granted permissions to travel, to travel and perform duties under the king's blessing. However, nowadays, the term adventurer is used by pretty much anyone who deemed themselves tough enough to go out and fight and earn coin. As we walked, Silas stopped in front of a large portrait that had, had to be at least 20 feet tall and 10 feet wide. The portrait was that of an older human man, who was wearing colorful clothing made of, made of possibly silk and various furs. His face looked worn, yet still chiseled and strong and gave an impression I can only describe as powerful but kind. His golden hair, just beginning to gray on the sides, was adorned with a magnificent crown of silver and sapphire. I assume this is King Jimmelnine. Correct. An apprehensive, an impressive looking man, no? Yes, even though it's just a portrait, I still feel like I can sense his presence commanding the atmosphere here. Shall we continue the tour? Yeah. We walked from the painting, and even though I knew it was a trick of the perspective, the King's eyes seemed to follow our movements. I let out a small shiver and continued on with Silas. Down this hall is the way to the dormitories where most students stay during their time at the Academy. The dorms are split into an east and west wing the former being for the women and the latter of the men. Up the grand stairway, you'll find the majority of the courses and classrooms. Depending on which major someone is in, they may be spending a lot of time up there. Finally, the administration office is this way. Salas led me down a side hall that looked like all the others. We turned and went down, and down, down another, then another, and then another hall. Again and again. Left, right, left, straight, right, and left again. Thank y'all. Water time. Hmm. Delicious. Okay. If Silas weren't leading, weren't leading me, I don't know if I'd be able to navigate this huge place on my own. Finally, we arrived in an open room with a large circular desk in the middle where five people seemed to be working and answering questions. Welcome to the admin office. One of these fine staff members will be able to help you out from here. As for me, I need to prepare some things prior to starting classes tomorrow. If they give you any trouble, just tell them you're a friend of Silas Teagland. I'll be off now. I'm sure we'll see each other again. Again later. And he's gone. I guess I should just go ask my questions of the staff. Hopefully I'll be able to get some answers or more clues to my memories. I walked up to the nearest available staff member and was immediately shown a single finger. Not a vulgar manner, just in a way that told me to wait a moment. 
The staff member I had gone up to was a young woman with dark brown hair tied up into a stiff bun. She wore a simple pale blue uniform with large round glasses to match. Judging from her pointed ears, she wasn't a, she wasn't human, but an elf, from what I remember of Solace's description of them. And she seemed to be working on some sort of strange glowing tablet. Her quick and deft finger movements seemed to be the only thing needed for it to work. A few more moments of awkward silence between us, and the woman finally turned to me. Name? Uh, Marcus. I was actually hoping to... A surname. Uh, Carver. I wanted... One moment, please. The woman began to work on her device, flicking her finger and poking it repeatedly. Ah, Carver. Marcus. There you are. It looks like your major is still marked as undeclared. I can update it for you. What will your major be? Wait, I'm on the list? Of course. You're enrolled as a new student in the adventurer courses. Did you not receive your acceptance letter? No, the thing is, I don't remember applying here at all. I have lost my memory recently and I came here with Silas to hopefully get some answers. Mr. Silas Teagland? I thought I recognized him. She was quiet for a moment. I'm not supposed to do this without proper verification and documentation, but if you're with a Teagland, then I suppose I can let it slide. She began clicking on her device again and then turned it for me to see. It says here you were accepted into enrollment this past summer. Only about a week ago, actually. That in and of itself is strange, since we normally don't accept late entrances. Something else is strange as well. It says that we received your application directly via, Ar via Architrans from a Mr. E. The more I look at it, the more I look at it, the more odd, the more things seem odd. Look here. She gestured to a panel on her device where general information on me was located. Carver Marcus, age 20, sex male, date of birth unknown, address unknown, affinity unknown, major undeclared, sponsor, Mr. E. Normally, with this misinformation missing, your application should have been denied automatically. She turned the screen away and began sliding her finger along it. How strange. More strange than the missing information and someone going by Mr. E? It says here your application was directly approved and accepted by Headmaster Hargraves himself, herself. Does the Headmaster not normally accept our applications? She doesn't. The administration office does. Anyway, that's all the information there is here. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more help. It's okay. Hoping to get all the answers in one, in one go here wasn't likely anyway. If I may, perhaps it would be best to finish her enrollment here and keep pursuing those answers while attending. That's a good point. The headmaster knows something about me to have gone through the trouble of accept uh, trouble of accepting me yourself. Plus, it's not like I have any other leads or places to stay. It's a great idea. Thank you. Seeing as you've lost your memories, I don't suppose you would know enough about the courses to choose a major ju major just yet. Second y'all, water time. Alrighty. Why don't you meet up with the other students in the main hall for the uh, for the orientation and then return here? You'll hopefully learn enough about the answers to choose a major. I'll do that. Thank you again. I, le I left the office and began making my way back out to the main hall. Alright, now which way do I go again to the back main hall? Let's go straight. I think this is the way. And then we'll go left. This was it. Right. <laughs> Easy. They all look the same. We'll go straight. Hmm. And we'll go... Right. Good adventurers always go right. Last hall. Let's go left. Huh. Let's see. Straight. Huh. Right. Alright. This doesn't seem right. Oof! I bumped into something solid as I turned the corner and it fell on my ass. Ow! Who puts a wall in the middle of a hallway? A giant, fuzzy... Looked up at the imposing figure from my place on the ground. A large white wolf beast been wearing only a towel towered over me and glared down. Why are you wandering around the men's dorm area without your pal? Dorm area? That's supposed to be on the other side of the castle. I didn't think I got that turned around. Uh, sorry, I was trying to find my way back to the main hall for orientation, but... I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere. As for my friend, he went ahead to take care of his own things. I held out my hand for him to help me up off the ground. He didn't. Instead, he sniffed the air in my direction. You smell. Never mind. What's your friend got to do with it? I picked myself up off the ground and brushed off my pants even though there wasn't dirt on them. You, you just asked why I wasn't with my pal. Your pal. Personal Arcanum Library. All students are issued one when they complete registration. Oh, I haven't declared a major yet, so I guess I haven't completed registration. That's why I was going to orientation to see what majors there were and to choose one. Hmm. My name is Orion Caster, member of the security team and second year second year fighter major. Now let's go with you back to the main hall. 
You don't have to. If you could just point me in the right direction, I'm sure I can find it this time. No. No? Why not? Don't trust you. So blunt. Follow me. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!